some more. We lift our voice. Sing it out. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive our King. Let every heart be buried in every nature see. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ while fields and floods, while fields and floods, our seals and plays. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat. Sounding joy, joy, unspeakable joy, overflowing where no tongue can tell. Joy, unspeakable joy, it rises in my soul and never lets me go. Imagine Christmas is over. All the programs have been performed. All the pictures have been taken. The carolers are done singing. The holiday parties have come and gone. The presents are unwrapped. And the big dinners have all been eaten. The Christmas music is turned off. The family's headed back home. Someone from work is on the phone. The kids have a practice to get to. The house needs to be cleaned. The bills still need to be paid. The groceries are running low. The stock market is still down and up and down. The TV is still on. The news is still worrisome. Life just keeps going as if Christmas never happened. But it did happen. Look around. The church is full of family and friends and laughter. 
because the baby is still the Savior. And the Savior is still the gift held out to a world still looking for joy, an earth still waiting for peace, and the peaceful still sing in wonder of the God who gave his Son and the Son who gave his life to add us to his family and one day welcome us home. Imagine Christmas is over. But remember that it really happened. And it changed everything. I realized that today uh, I should be preaching a, a New Year's Eve message, right, or a New Year's message. I mean, Christmas is over. Christmas is over. I mean, no sooner did it turn um, midnight on Christmas night than it seemed like everything was just, just zipped, cut off. I mean, the Christmas movies, you can't find them that much on anymore. Um, you know, uh, everything seemed to just be, uh, Christmas is over. Our world at midnight on Christmas night just kind of cut it off. Christmas is over. Our world has already moved on to the next holiday or the whatever you want to call New Year's. But listen, when something as significant as the birth happens, the event that we say changes everything, it's difficult to just zip, to just, to just cut it off. And I, I don't think we could very well move on to the next holiday today. I really don't. So I want us to stay within the confines of Christmas for the next few minutes, okay? So for us, us this morning, Christmas is not over. And if you came to the depot this morning looking for your New Year's message, well, guess what? You get to come back next week and... Uh, We'll start a new uh, message series called Pray First, and you'll get your uh, New Year's message series then, okay? Sounds good. All right, we'll see you then. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and read our scripture that we've been reading all month long and all series long. It's from Isaiah 9-6, from the prophet Isaiah. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called... Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Sounds like Jesus to me, doesn't it? You? Sounds like a great description of our Savior. So let's review um, where we've been so far. And so week one, we said that the birth brings peace. And that uh, Isaiah describes Jesus as being the Prince of Peace. And he rules over the kingdom of our hearts. One day, he will come. And there will be peace on earth. Week two, we said that the birth brings hope. We have hope in Isaiah's description of Jesus as being um, everlasting father. Right? Everlasting father. On Christmas Eve, we said that the birth brings love. A mighty God is the description Isaiah gives us. A mighty God stepped down from his throne to become a humble baby in humble circumstances. Why? Because he loved us so much and he died for us. This morning, we're going to look at Isaiah's description of Jesus as being a wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor, and we're going to talk about how the birth brings us joy. Okay, go ahead and say that out loud so it makes you feel like we're back in the Christmas spirit. The birth brings us joy. The birth brings us joy. So, let's talk about joy for a few minutes. Joy. So, Thursday morning, that was Christmas, right? Thursday? Okay. When you don't work, you tend to lose day, days and such. Uh, Thursday morning, after all the presents were, were unwrapped, uh, my son says, Christmas is over. And he didn't say it in a mean way. It was a disappointing way, you know. 
Christmas is over. And of course, as the, the great parents that we are, oh no, Christmas is not over, son. Christmas is always in our hearts. No, we didn't say that. But we did say, no, Christmas is not over. We still got the rest of the day to play with all the stuff that you got. And then tomorrow we're going with the entire Smith family for our Christmas thing with them. Christmas is not over. It, it's funny that an hour before that, he and his little brother come running into the living room with the biggest smiles on their, on their face that you could ever imagine. And what seemed like joy Christmas morning was actually happiness in disguise. Because by afternoon, questions had, had begun to arise. Christmas is over. Christmas is over. And the unfortunate truth is that once the festivities are over, our traditions, our festivities and everything, uh, once all that's over, we all act like it. Christmas is over also, don't we? It's over. Let's get the tree and the decorations out of the house as quickly as possible. The cat needs no more tree water. We need no more uh, uh, ornaments broken by a two-year-old wobbling around, okay? We, uh, just as quickly as the traditions are over, we are cutting Christmas off as well. What's unfortunate is that this peace and hope and love that we've all experienced during the Christmas season, we so easily and quickly say goodbye to it. But it's important that we understand the difference here in happiness and in joy. There is a difference, folks. There's a difference between happiness and joy. You see, the birth, the birth brings joy. Not happiness that comes and goes. Happiness is fly by night. Happiness comes and goes. Just as quickly as my son was, was happy uh, Christmas morning, it was gone Christmas afternoon. Happiness comes and goes. But joy, my friends. The birth brings joy, and joy is lasting. Joy is lasting. You guys uh, shared with your neighbor the, the, the gift that made you the happiest, right? Uh, you told him the gift that made you the happiest for Christmas. My wife got me a new pair of work boots. Yeah. <laughs> a new pair of work boots. And it made me very happy because... For the last few months, years, I've been wearing these shoes that have been falling apart. I mean, I cut off pieces of them every day. Oh, yeah. My socks are starting to actually touch the ground <laughs> through them, through the shoes that I'm wearing. And so it made me very happy knowing that I had some now, some steel-toed, waterproof boots with a solid foundation that I could walk around in. Very happy. You think I'm joking about my shoes, but let me tell you, it's a real true-to-life story. I'm, a lot of time, I, I spend a lot of time on the streets because with my job screwing in light bulbs, what I actually do is lead light bulb screw in her. What I actually do is I walk the streets and go door-to-door -door saying, hey, we're going to come around and screw in some new light bulbs for you. And so I, I'm on the streets a lot walking. <laughs> Kid you not, I pass a homeless guy. And he has a bag on his shoulder. And he looks at me and he says, do you need some shoes? <laughs> No joke. I wish I was joking. True story. Ask me, did I need some shoes? That's how bad my shoes were. Um, but I got some new ones for Christmas, some new steel-toed boots, and it made me very happy. But listen, I understand that these boots, not the ones I have on, these are not boots. These are Chuck Taylors. Um, the, these boots that I have, that one day they'll wear out too. And the happiness that I had Christmas morning when I opened my new boots, it's going to be gone because it's just happiness. It's just happiness for a moment. And these boots will end up the same way my old ones did. But listen, the joy of childbirth doesn't end when you leave the hospital. The joy of childbirth doesn't end when you leave the hospital because every day you discover, see, every day you discover a new joy. Every day you discover a new joy. 
The same is true about the birth and Jesus. We experience the joy at Christmas, uh, the joy of the birth. Sorry, just a little bit sidetracked. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> don't know why. See, the joys that you discover with childbirth every day. Um, listen, I want you to know about joy is joy is lasting. Happiness is, is fleeting. And the birth brings joy. Okay? It brings lasting joy. And so this is not the time to get down and get the blues because Christmas is over. No, no, no. Christmas is, is not over. We can tap into that joy that we have in, in, at any moment. And it cannot be turned off like a light switch. Christmas doesn't have to be over because the birth brings joy. All right? The birth brings joy. Now I want to talk a little bit more about this description that uh, Isaiah the prophet leaves for us. He says, wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. We're going to start with this word wonderful. Wonderful. Here's a word we throw around a lot, huh? Especially this time of year. Wonderful. We describe various things as being wonderful. Um, this is one of those words we tend to overuse sometimes. Do you have, anybody else have a friend that uses, that has their go-to word? You know, the one word, that, and you start playing a game where you count how many times they say that word. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? And, and this is one of those words that could be that. Wonderful. That the description is the only thing they have is the description to describe anything. is wonderful. Wonderful. So this time of year we use it a lot and we say, uh, what a wonderful gift you've given me. Thank you. What a wonderful lights that we waited for hours to go through in McCaddenville. What wonderful lights. Um, what wonderful food. What a wonderful service. Wonderful Christmas. Wonderful, wonderful, oh, wonderful. We use the word wonderful a lot. We overuse it, and um, we've used it a lot during Christmas. But Isaiah's use of the word of, of wonderful counselor is a little bit different, okay? The word wonderful's different here. His description of the coming Messiah as being wonderful means incomprehensible. That's a big one. Incomprehensible. That's what he means when he says wonderful. He also means mind-blowing. The coming Messiah, Jesus, the birth is, is, is wonderful because it's incomprehensible. It's mind-blowing, the birth. And we can find the proof of the use of that word by just simply looking at the birth and the circumstances that, that, that surrounded it. Born to a virgin. That's incomprehensible, folks. That's mind-blowing. A king born in a barn. A barn laid in a feeding trough. That's incomprehensible. That's mind-blowing. It's wonderful. Heaven's angels. Heaven's angels as, as the birth announcement, that's incomprehensible. That's, that's mind-blowing. That's, that's wonderful. It's a more accurate use of the word wonderful. Visited by kings, wise men, magi, bearing gifts. Incomprehensible. Mind-blowing. Wonderful. The proof is in the birth. The birth is wonderful because it's incomprehensible. It's mind-blowing. But we're not done yet. He says, wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. Anybody ever been to counseling here? <laughs> Don't worry. You can raise your hand. It's okay. We, we should all go. Seriously. Um, counseling is a good thing. I've, I've been to counseling. Counseling is a good thing. Let me tell you a little bit about counseling that I know. When you go to counseling, what a counselor does, and uh, I've got a couple counselors in here, so I've got to be careful. Uh, sorry, Hannah. What a counselor does, because I've been, um, they, 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 what they try to do is they try to lead you to come up with the answer yourself. 
right? Is that close? Their goal is to lead you and guide you down a road so that eventually you're going to figure out or hopefully come to some kind of enlightening moment where you say, oh, that is why I'm like I am or this and that, okay? And, and they use these beautiful questions to do this. Um, questions like, why do you think that is, right? Why, why do you think that is? Or a question like, well, how did that make you feel? Correct? How did that make you feel? Great questions to lead us to eventually having this awakening where we discover the root or the source of our issues. Because face it, folks, if you've been to counseling or not, we all have issues. We all have issues. And that's what a counselor does. But the truth is, we wish that we had a counselor that would just come in and kind of just give us a good swift kick and tell us exactly what we need to do to fix our circumstances. Just tell, isn't that what we want though? A counselor to tell, tell me exactly, like almost as if they were inside of us and they knew exactly what we were going through. Just tell me how to fix it. That's what we really want out of a counselor. Get rid of our issues. Help, help me get rid of my issues. Listen, Jesus as wonderful counselor, the word counselor in Isaiah is actually used to describe uh, the counselor that a king would hold. The counsel that a king would hold. And kings in those days were not just figureheads. I mean, they, they settled disputes. They held court and, dis and settled disputes. And the exact same word that Isaiah used here for, for counselor, we also find it in kings. Where this wise guy we know as, as Solomon. Y'all hear it? Wisdom. Solomon. Wise, wise king. It is used to describe him. Now listen. Do you remember the dispute? Let me, let me give you an example of how Solomon was wise. Do you remember the dispute that was had over a baby in, in Kings? Let me, let me share with you. This is wise. This is, this is the kind of counsel that uh, Solomon provided. There were two young women who lived in the same house and who both had an infant son, came to Solomon for judgment. One of the women claimed that the other, after accidentally smothering her own son while sleeping, had exchanged the two's children to make it appear that the living child was hers. The other woman denied this, and so both women claimed to be the mother of the living son and said that the dead boy belonged to the other. Are you with me? So, after some deliberation, King Solomon called for a sword, to be brought before him. And he declared that there was only one fair solution. The live son must be split into two, and each woman receiving half of the child. Now, upon hearing this terrible verdict, the boy's true mother cried out, Oh Lord, give, give the baby to her, just don't kill him. The liar, in her bitter jealousy, exclaimed, It shall be neither mine or yours, divided. The king, of course, declared that the first mother was the true mother, and the loving mother would rather surrender her baby to another than hurt him and gave her the baby. This is just an example of the wise counselor that Solomon was. But remember, we're talking about a wonderful counselor here in Jesus. So, we have a wonderful counselor that can settle the disputes in our lives, that can settle the disputes in our own hearts. We have a wonderful counselor who fills us with joy, which lasts through seasons of happiness and sadness. Wonderful counselor. Incomprehensible, mind-blowing wonderful king who is so wise to, to solve disputes in our own lives. Now, does that bring you joy? 
Does it bring you joy knowing that the description of wonderful counselor is that of Jesus, the very one that, were, that was born into your heart and was born into mine? Wonderful counselor. If you read Psalms 35, not 35, Psalms 35. Here's what you read. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. You've heard that before. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. Every, every new morning is an opportunity to tap into the joy that the birth brings at Christmas. Not just Christmas morning, when joy is disguised as happiness, but the true joy that we tap into our hearts. Every day, every day we have an opportunity to usher in the birth of Jesus into the hearts of people that surround us and be a part of them experiencing the joy that is Jesus. This is why we're still celebrating Christmas. This is why we're still celebrating Christmas. When the rest of the world has, has moved on, has cut ties, has, went to, has gone to the next thing, we still celebrate Christmas because of the incomprehensible, mind-blowing, wonderful counselor within us. Let's pray. Father, this Christmas you have revealed to us the person of Jesus, the Savior, as being, as bringing hope and peace and love, joy. And so, Father, as our lives get further and further from, away from that day that we celebrate as Christmas, Lord, I pray that we would not grow further and further away from that truth, that the birth brings hope, love, peace, joy. May we be reminded that Christmas is not over. Christmas is never over. It's... Every day is a new day for the birth. So, Father, during this time of commitment, where we ask you to speak into our hearts and our minds, and as we contemplate our own lives, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us. So, Father, that when we leave this place, that love, joy, peace, and hope that we've discovered in you would not not only just stay with us, Father, but would spread to others. We love you. In Jesus' name.